uh, youtube.com slash channel slash capital U, capital C, capital P, lowercase z, capital H, capital A, uh, uh, one, lowercase y, lowercase a, capital J, lowercase z, lowercase y, lowercase p, capital J, capital T, lowercase p. I don't know if that's a zero or an O, but it's capital. And then capital A, lowercase h, lowercase b, five, lowercase i, lowercase y, and that same character, O or zero, again. This is why we need you to subscribe to Richard Misery on YouTube. Yes, guys, make that happen. Thank you. Louis Scott this one says it was a Q. So, fuck. Like, I can't. Yeah. No, we're not going through that again. <laughs> and hello and welcome to the Rich Wizardry Podcast, episode 215 for Thursday, the 30th of May, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. I didn't play our intro music because, well, one song is enough. And that's Kent over there. He he doesn't push the buttons. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what we heard was YouTube Thing by Stephen Cogswell. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Cogswell. That, that was an incredible surprise that showed up in our inbox. Yes. Uh, my, my text to Kent was, holy shit, dude, we got Cogswold. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you actually called me on my, on my drive home and said, dude, you might want to pull over. <laughs> well, because, because I know uh, you're, you're of all the people that I know, you're the most stringent when it comes to talking or texting while driving. So, um, and I knew yeah, it, with yeah. that, with that in mind, you definitely did not want to be driving, trying to listen to this, this track on your phone because you don't have Bluetooth in your Mustang. Right. Yeah, exactly. Wait. Um, yeah. And that was, that was, uh, pretty exciting, man. Um, yeah. Cogswell, who is well known for doing the intro songs for night attack for years going now, mm -hmm. uh, honored us by making one for us. Was that last week's show? Or two weeks ago show, I think? Uh, two weeks ago, yeah, because uh, I haven't released last week's yet because uh, I suck at life. Um, <laughs> actually, honestly, I've just been super busy, dude. Uh, yeah, it's it's and W. Scott is one of those, like, never mind the fact that I made it into a Cogswell song. Right, that's that's how we both feel, too. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. as an um, update, we are over 50 subscribers on YouTube, so we do have a YouTube link now. It's youtube.com slash ritual misery. Now, the Hell, R and the M are capitalized. I don't know if that matters. It probably does because it's YouTube, but uh, y'all made that happen, and I appreciate it. And here's the really funny thing. They actually gave us the Ritual Misery a long time ago and then stopped people from using it because we weren't over 50 because they it was like a glitch that they let us do it in the first place. And now right. it's actually working. So yep. uh, Yeah, and uh, for people that are not familiar with Stephen Cogswell, uh, head over to otfi.com. That's A W. T F Y dot com and find out all the amazing stuff that he's got going on. He's got thing. a new album, the ale wife that was just dropped this month. So he's actually yep. making music out there, doing his thing and making amazing stuff happen. So get on over there to odd dot com, a W T F Y dot com. And that's a, uh, and with that, fuck you. So <laughs> cruise on through life, make that shit happen. Um, yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. cool. So just just for the record, this is episode two fifteen of the Ritual Misery podcast, recorded thirtieth of May twenty nineteen. I, I said that. Did you? I said that I in the intro. Did you? I did. Well, I told everybody again. This is why you don't do intros, dude. <laughs> dude, my brain is fried. This week, <laughs> I. So last week, my son got pulled over in our ninety seven Jeep Cherokee. Um, he wasn't do he wasn't you know speeding or running stop signs or anything like that. The license plate light was not illuminated, so cop pulled him over. Uh, he didn't get a ticket. He got a warning. Uh, but of course, what does a dad do? Uh, pull the truck into the garage right. so I could fix it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that shit. Arr. Yep. I'm gonna change out this light bulb. This is real simple, son. Watch how easy this is. Uh, <laughs> yep. Nope. Light bulb is fine. <laughs> um, oh, 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 okay. If it's not the light well, bulb, it's definitely a fuse. I mean, to be an electrician like me, uh, what what little bit I understand about electricity, um, <laughs> you don't know that the light bulb was good. You just know that the replacement light bulb did not work, and that led you to believe that there was something wrong with the wiring and not the bulb. Yeah, so I went to the fuses, which is always the problem if it's not the bulb, right? Right, right yeah. 
Yeah, except when all the fuses are good. Um, hmm. Yeah. So and, and I, the power I, supply is good because the Jeep starts. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I did a quick Google search on 1997 Jeep Cherokees, and uh, what repeatedly comes up in the search results is how shitty the wiring is in a 97 Jeep Cherokee, especially at the hinge points. Uh, so like the the um, tailgate uh, door, like the hatchback mm-hmm. part uh, and, and the uh, passenger doors. Uh, yeah, wires just break. And uh, so this week I've been trying to chase down the wires. Uh, I've been cutting into wire harnesses. And uh, the first harness that I uh, cut into, I was like, what the hell? There's no wires in it. What? Where are the... Oh, this wasn't a wire harness. <laughs> I sliced open the windshield wiper tube, windshield wiper fluid tube for the, for the back window. Uh, so now um, I just broke it even more. Uh, so <laughs> look, look, man. That's been- if you don't know how to fix it, just keep breaking it until you can accomplish something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, w. Scottis one says, great job, fucko. Which, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you about my great job, which I'm sure I'll have an update for next week because holy shite. Uh, the, we didn't winterize our trailer this year, so it blew the water pump and the water heater. I replaced the water pump today. Oh, I've had it in my in my living room or my, my dining room for months. Well, weeks. And finally replaced the water pump today. And as I was coming down here, my uh, son and I had just um, installed the new water heater. It's not fully installed yet. We haven't in- installed the water lines, haven't done pressure checks, things like that, or gas checks or anything else. But the physical installation is done. Um, and I got to tell you what, uh, I saw that it was a quarter to six and I told my son, okay, I need all this cleaned up like we were never out here. And I came inside. So he essentially became my two level. And I say two level because he's still learning some of the basics, um, but he's uh. he's he's decent at holding a flashlight. Uh, can't cut through nylon with some dikes, but we'll we'll work on that. <laughs> uh, side cutters, you mean side cutters, right? No, diagonal cutting cu- pliers. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, uh, in my CDCs, they're still listed as dikes. <laughs> so, Amazing. you still have CDCs? Uh, I still got my like your career field. As My of? first set of CDCs when I got seven level and they give you a full new set, I still have those in plastic somewhere mm. because I never, I never studied them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, th- th- I had about four sets like that still wrapped in plastic before I burned them a couple years back. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, uh, come come September, that'll be uh, Memorial Day, I think, or Labor Day. Labor Day is going to be a big burn fest of all the old military shit that I don't need anymore. Yeah, so for for the non Air Force type, CDC stands for Career Development Course, which is a a required course that you take. That's, that's basically an overview of everything, all, like all of the knowledge that you need to have for doing your job, and a bunch of knowledge that has nothing to do with your job, but you got to know it anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Good time. <sighs> yeah. So that that's uh, that's what I was currently working on. Um. But I I got a question for you, dude. Mm. What the fuck is a plat? Plat? A plat. Um, I I think I've heard that that term associated with um, either like real estate or something to do with like like uh, 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 like land claims or something mm. something to that effect. No, is no, that, you're not wrong. Where? That's exactly what it is. It's it's the the generalized layout of a city. Ah. Oh. Okay. Well, my neighbor and I are in a little bit of a dispute about fence lines because I'm trying to get a fence put up. And for whatever fucking reason, his fence is, he's got two fences. They don't line up with each other and they don't line up with his property line. All the plats around here are indicated with a a piece of rebar, like a three foot piece of rebar stuck in the ground at the corners Mm. of all the plats. So you know exactly where they are. I know where three of mine are, the two on the backside, then one over here where three yards combine there's one there i don't have any on the front now my property line with my neighbor on on my right as i'm sitting here which would be if you're facing my house it's the right side that dude his yard and mine should be a straight line the guy on my right or my left side he and i don't his his fence should be right along where he where his property line is him he and i don't have a problem he's like yeah just hook up to my fence instead of making it blah 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 and okay cool but the one on my right, this dude, it's a straight line from the back to the front, according to all the maps. 
Now, here's where the problem lies. You ready for this? Okay. There's no marker in the fronts, in the front side of my house, mm. either on, on either side. Again, I'm not worried about the one on the left, but the one on the right where the dispute is because he doesn't want me hooking up to his fence, and I'm not trying to make an entire fence when there's already two fences there. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. There's no there's no marker out there, but you know what there is? There's a utility section. And the utility maps don't line up with the plats. Mm. Okay, fine. We're going to go by the plats because that's a legal document, the legal uh, uh, establishment of property lines. The, the dis- yeah, the description of the property. Yes. Um, so what do I do? I grab my phone and my GPS, and I put in the coordinates that I found online of where the thing should be, and I go out there, and I can get it within 5 to 10 feet. And that's great, except, as I mentioned, those utility lines. Mm. There's enough EMF or magnetic radiation or whatever the hell is coming off those damn, you know, the cable box, the electrical box, the gas box. They're all in one little area. And there's enough interference with those that my phone says I should be way the fuck over there. And my GPS says I should be way the fuck over there. Both of them are within five feet of the the point that they want it to be in. But those five feet don't, there's not a Venn diagram. There's a good 20 feet in between the two. Yeah. Uh, I checked to make sure I was using the correct GPS th- data and everything else, the data sets. Man, I don't know where the fuck the line is. I can't figure it out. And if you go by the road, because the it, the the property line should stop right where the road starts to turn because it's a circle. It, there's a, there's a tra- not a traffic circle, but a uh, you know like a, a neighborhood circle, like, like a cul-de-sac. Yes, yes, cul-de-sac right there. And right where the road starts to turn is where my property should stop. Well, that doesn't help because when they fucking put the road down. It's not like there's there's sidewalks here, you know. There's mm. just a ditch for all the water rainwater to go into, <laughs> right? The where the road actually starts turning almost next to my driveway, which is nowhere near the fucking property line. It's a good forty feet from the property line at least, so mm. no help. So that I, that was my frustration, and you know what? I really just don't care. I'm just gonna put my fence over here instead. <sighs> yeah, I mean, as long as uh, yeah, I mean, as long as you don't start a. a feud like a generations well, long feud with your your neighbor yeah and here's the thing i would love to buy about a, a maybe 700 square feet of his property mm. because he has like five trees that are blocking my view of the mountains and if i bought that little corner of his property i could just cut them fucking trees down <laughs> damn yeah and he's getting ready to move so he's all he's all like uh we're trying to sell the house i don't want to have like all this other like fuck man just yeah. So that's my yeah. life. Uh, you got kind of so, lucky. Unless unless something really shifts, your property line is defined by brick walls on all four yeah. sides. Well, three yes. sides plus the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm fine with that. Like, I, I made my wall taller. Yeah, <laughs> you <laughs> added bricks. So. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, man, so something effing amazing happened today. Oh, yeah? Netflix finally dropped their trailer for the Dark Crystal TV series is coming out this fall. Oh, not only dropped the title, but also dropped the actual release date. Mm. Um, August 30th, we are going to get the the new series, The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Mm. There's a teaser trailer out. I've watched it about eight times now. <laughs> I, I did not watch it because, as I said, when you sent it to me, I was working on the trailer. So I have not watched it uh, semi-intentionally. I have questions for you. Okay. What, what are your questions? Question number one. Does the, I want to say animation, but you know what I mean. The the, the puppetry? The, the visuals? Yeah, yeah, the visuals. The, do the visual effects match uh, with the original? Is it, yes. Is it style-wise it's very, the same? Yes, it is stylistically identical. It, it, the picture is much more beautiful right. than the original because the original was shot in like 1981 or something like that. Right. So it was very grainy and, and whatnot, but, but visual style, it is a hundred percent match. Nice. Okay. Um, next, uh, is fizz gig in it? Yes. Cause I gotta know if Michelle makes another appearance. It, right. <laughs> uh, yes, Fizz Gig is in it, but I can't tell if it's modern day or if it's part of a flashback because there are some, or well, not flashback, it'd actually be a flash forward because this is a 
prequel to the movie, which takes place at something like a hundred years prior. Oh wow! To the movie, um, and, then, and there is a what are years there, in this world? We don't know. So right, right, yeah. Um, but, but there is a couple of shots of Fizzgig. Well, a Fizzgig like creature. I don't know for sure if it is the character. You don't know if it's if Michelle or will. not. Right. Yeah. It might just be, might be Michelle's mom or grandma. Inside joke. Inside joke. All right. All right. Uh, but we're going to explain it because it's more fun that way. Um, yeah, sure. So for the, for the viewers, this is a, uh, pop figurine of Fizzgig. Yes. This is the, uh, dog like creature from the dark crystal movie. And, uh, well, well, one of our, we, we, we have to, we have to start, we have to start a little bit further back. Um, okay. Okay. there was a cartoon called Foofer. <laughs> that featured a an animated blue dog, and I yes. don't remember much about the cartoon other than having seen it a few times and it immediately washing away. Yeah, it was a it was a poodle with very like elaborate yes curls. And... Um, at one point, a uh, previous guest of the show, Charlie Fultz, <laughs> yes. uh, bestowed this nickname upon the girl that I was dating in high school, uh, Jennifer Fell. Um, uh, she okay. Uh, I think so. That was the that was the joke, like from kindergarten all the way through high school. <laughs> um, and I want to preface this by saying that I don't mean anything derogatory towards Jen Fell. In fact, she is a lovely person whom I broke it off with because I was not mature enough for the relationship. But anyway, yeah. that being said, um, so she had this nickname long before I knew her. In fact, oh yeah, this is like from grade school. Yeah, th- this is forever ago um and by the time i came along it had been shortened down to foof in fact right yeah, yeah. so that's what kent called her he lived like three three houses down um in fact i think that's how me and you met was because i started hanging out with jen fell and your locker was always right next to hers so, oh right because our last then, names are yeah and then willie would be there with him with you and i knew willie from a couple of my classes and i think that's how we actually met in eighth grade but anyway and that's, then, that's then in, like- in ninth grade is actually when we became friends because of the whole nickname thing. <laughs> uh, and, and we had a Miss Dertini's class together. Um, uh, Miss Dertini. Miss Dertini, rest in peace. Um, yeah, you are tech <laughs> <laughs> teacher. <laughs> so, um, so, and here's, here's where it gets interesting is because I was dating Jen and Jen had a younger sister named Michelle. And I think Michelle was three years younger. I think she was a freshman in our senior year. Something like that. I think yeah, she, three I, yeah, I think she was the anti-freshman to my little freshman fan club. Um, <laughs> it, which, she was kind of a, a, a hanger on. Uh, she she followed her sister around. Her sister would be trying to hang out with us doing, you know, um, you know, grown up ninth grader things or 10th grader things. Right, right. <laughs> And um, so we would try to like, uh, you know, we weren't like overly mean, but we would try to be kind of, you know, less than, than, um, accommodating. Yes. Yes. Um, sure. and, and the funny thing about Jen was that she wasn't, I don't want to say witty enough, but that's kind of what I mean was she wasn't witty enough to like adequately defend her sister. And plus, she was always laughing too hard to even really care because we were. Michelle was always the butt of all of our jokes, and it was never anything cruel or or mean. We weren't, you know, just calling her bitches and whatever. But right, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was definitely like we we let her know through humor that her presence was less than desirable. Right. Well, then one day Kent and I are sitting around. <laughs> Wondering what the hell to do next, and we start watching Dark Crystal. Mm-hmm. And now it, the key is here that when Jen got her name, she came to school with a perm, and yes. and it was super permy, and that's why, and that was when Foofer was on TV, so that's how she got the name Foofer. Mm. <laughs> Kent and I are watching TV, and <laughs> it was the day after. Um, the day after we had just hung out with Jen. So it was like a, it was like a Monday afternoon during summer break or some, something like that. Um, we had just hung out with her. 
because we we hung out there quite often. I mean, they had they had a pool table. Jen was nice. Even I mean, you knew Jen from way back, so it's not like you were un- unwelcome or felt like a third wheel. If nothing else, I felt like the third wheel, and I was dating the chick. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of history. We we yeah. knew each other since like probably before kindergarten. Yeah, you both lived in the same house since uh, conception. So, um. Not in the same house together, but in the same no, house. No, 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 not the same. We're definitely the same neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Our whole lives. <laughs> that would be weird. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we had just got done h- hanging out with them. And the next day, you and I are watching Dark Crystal. And at one point, this little dog-like creature with lots of curly <laughs> hair, blonde curly hair, comes up and starts going, yeah, yeah. And then it won't shut up when it's told to shut up. Like it, it's 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 distracting the main characters from a conversation. That's fine. That's just part of the movie. It's been around since the early '80s, whatever. Except Kent and I look at each other, and both of us had just got this idea because Michelle had just gotten a perm that matched Fizz gig, and we look at each other and we're like, "Oh my God, that's Michelle." Yup. <laughs> So later that day, we yeah. started dro- name dropping it. Just hey, Fizzgig, and she had never seen the movie, didn't know what it meant, <sighs> and it was like a good year before she actually watched the movie and figured out that that was our new joke. Yep, and she was not pleased. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man. So yeah. So yes, uh, Michelle is in the new Netflix show. <laughs> Um, dude, tell me, tell me about this, uh, experience that you had this week with, um, some, some podcast producing. I am working on a show called Talking Feds. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. a show hosted by Harry Littman. He is a former U.S. attorney, former district U.S. attorney, all this stuff. He's on CNN and Fox News and all the MSNBC and all that stuff fairly regularly right. talking about politics mm-hmm. and law. This week on the show... We had the esteemed constitutional law professor of Cambridge University and author, the dean of law at UC Berkeley, and a sitting U.S. congressman on the video call that I now get to edit and release. Nice. Uh, it, can, can you tell us who the congressman was? Uh, I would, but I totally forgot his name. <laughs> All right. Um, no, but that's... Um... Okay. And he's, pretty, he's, uh, he's actually on the House Judicial Committee, and they're talking about the possibilities and implications of impeaching Trump and things like that. So it's, it's, it's people that know what they're talking about. And it was, um, I think my words to you are, we're all doomed. But <laughs> yeah. um, um, Well, that's super fascinating. So was, t- wh- where, where, where can people find this show? So when, when it's released, they can, uh, they can listen to it and know what you're talking about. Talkingfeds.com. And it'll be released, I believe, as long as I get my shit together and get it released, uh, get it edited. It should be released Monday morning. So Monday morning. Yeah. Okay. But that that show in general, if you have a non conservative bias, I'll say that instead of saying liberal, but if you'll if you have a non conservative bias, that show is amazing for you. That's pretty great. Uh yeah, I, I think everybody should check that out. In fact, by the time this episode releases that episode is probably already out i don't know i gotta get this one cranked out because tomorrow's the end of the month and i want to make sure that i'll get back on the patreon schedule uh i've been a week behind for like ever (laughs) (laughs) right right um man so uh this past weekend Mm -hmm. uh we went to the movies as as we uh, do on a lot of weekends Mm -hmm. and uh we saw aladdin um i i too watched aladdin I what went, did you think? Um, well, I'm I'm gonna give it my ra- my official rating system. Okay, which is a thumb up, thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yep. Okay. Um, I'll have to agree with that. I mean, th- I I felt like it was incredibly faithful to uh, the yes. 90s costume. Yes. Uh, there was a few things here and there that were changed, and of course, a lot of the jokes and and you know, it wasn't a word for word, uh, you know, conversational, you know, dialogue. Um, in fact, there there were a few things that were drastic departures, but they, like the whole map thing and, and everything else, like they, 
they added to the story. They didn't distract from the story. And the parts that they took out, I thought, were the extraneous parts that didn't need to be there or they readdressed it in a way that felt more natural than it would have felt right. if they had gone scene yep. for scene. Yeah. And um, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a huge fan of the original work. I, it was fine. I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, you know, the jokes were funny and stuff like that. Uh, the thing about that movie, though, and I'm talking about the 90s version and this, uh, the songs are catchy. Yes. You will hear them in your head for w- weeks on end after you hear a five second snippet of a song yep. while you were sleeping. Uh, and that, you know, and that 100% held up. I was like at work, like absent mindedly singing these songs. One step uh, ahead of the bad guy. Yeah. 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 So um, you, here's the thing, that, though. And you started the cycle over again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you just lost the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as did you in all of our hands. Here, here's the thing, though, is it started out shaky. And I don't know if it was my theater, because I, I was at the local theater, not like the big chain theater. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was the theater or what, but it started out, the first songs didn't seem to match up with the audio, like the lip syncing for the actor himself as he's going around. Oh. It seemed just a hair off. After... I don't think I'm spoiling anything, but after uh, Prince Ali of uh, Ababwa came along, everything just fleshed out and it worked fine. But that first, like especially the first cut scene when he's going running through the city, um, yeah, yeah, it was just a little off, and I was very like, ah, oh, man, they might have they might have really ducked this one up, but it came through and it worked out really well. And then they added a, at least one song, and I think they added a song and then a reprise of that same song for Jasmine. Yep. And it was a great song, had a great tune. It was a female empowerment song, which is something that Aladdin desperately needed was some kind of female empowerment because everything's kind of given to Jasmine in the original as opposed to her fighting for it and earning it. Whereas this kind of changes that around a little bit, which is really refreshing and really good. And also, my final comment about this, unless you bring something else up, um, how is it possible that they made Jasmine more hot than she already was? (laughs) <laughs> than the cartoon? Yeah. I don't know. I've been partial to, to, you know, flesh and blood humans over drawings, but, you know. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, so, no, I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. Uh, the actress that, that plays Jasmine is attractive. She is gorgeous, yes. <laughs> she, she fits um, the role very well, and she did an exceptional job at acting, where I really thought Jasmine was kind of shallow um, when I watched the cartoon. Like, just, just the, the concept and the... But again, it, it was it's it's not a female oriented yeah, movie. But... Was, it, yeah, cookie cutter princess. Yeah. Um, um, whereas they, really they kind excited... of flipped that around and made it really good. Yeah. What what really excited me about this movie was that it was in fact very good and draw drew audiences to the theater, uh, which is important to me because we own it in the movie draft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad I saw it because it was ridiculously stupid. And let's see how we did. <laughs> Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DominicClub.tv for the week of May 27th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. In my younger days, I was addicted to the hokey pokey. Then I turned myself around. Let's go to the scoreboard! <laughs> Team Drunk Kids Gaming falls to last place with $21.9 million. Team Devon Squad's in fifth place with $50.4 million. Team Game Nights in fourth place with $142.2 million. Team Retro Misery jumps to third place with $128 million boost from Disney's Aladdin, putting their total at $145.7 million. Team Half a Drink is in second place with $750.7 million. And in first place, with $1,144.9 million, it's Team Movie Party. That's your stream, Team Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of May 29, 2019. All right, so I think we're locked in now, right? Um, the top three, you're kind of locked in? I yeah, dude. I we're definitely nobody's catching movie party. No, and uh, I don't. I don't think it's likely that we're gonna catch have a drink. Um, but I'm pretty confident none of the other teams are gonna catch us. Yeah, so. cool. Because we 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 have like we barely begun. We've only got two movies out. One of them was a throwaway that gave us fifteen million dollars. Right. Um, right. and the other one is Aladdin, which has just begun its its stroll and it hit hit theaters really strong this weekend, and I don't think that's gonna slow down because I could go watch it again. Right. Um, yeah, and next weekend or this coming weekend, we've got Godzilla 
and uh, the buzz on that is strong. Yes, um, it's almost strong enough to make me want to see it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna see. This is a movie that I might see more than once because, as I'm, I've said many times, I love kaiju movies, and I really enjoyed the first Godzilla movie that in this series that came out a couple of years back. Um, so yeah, there's no question I'm seeing this movie this weekend. Yeah, um, I'm I'm pretty excited. We we, we kind of hit really strong right through here. And so the next several weeks we have, we kind of have competing movies, honestly. Yeah, but. we really do. And we've got, uh, yeah, we got secret life of pets coming out, which is going to, you know, Eat steal some Atlanta. of the Aladdin a yep. uh, little bit. Um, um, but then like we're about a month from now, a little over a month from now, we're going to have Spider-Man. Uh, so that's going <laughs> to, that's like, that's going to secure us. For sure, in the third. in third place, yeah. like there's, I'm quite uh, confident. Okay, so of, third. of all the movies left this summer, which movie are you most ex- looking forward to yourself? Uh probably Spider Man. To be honest, yeah. Um, yeah, I've already said multiple times now. I'm super excited for Godzilla, mm. uh, but I think my I think my MCU fanboy uh, makes Spider Man. Uh, the bigger title for yeah. me. I, I, my opinion really hasn't changed, even though Lion King is my favorite movie uh, of all time thus far, and Aladdin gave me more hopes for it. Mm. I'm still most excited about it. Right. Like, yeah, I, that's barely in the summer draft. That's like right at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's I, I, I cannot qualm my excitement for that, especially after the trailer dropped or the teaser dropped. Oh, it's that's yeah. gonna be wicked. Yep, there's a lot of there's a lot of good movies coming out. Uh, yeah, I, I I love movies. I'm excited for like probably three quarters of the movies on on the list yet yeah. to come. Um, uh, what else are you excited about? Because I know I'm excited about patreoncom slash misery. Dude, patreoncom slash misery is freaking awesome because there's all kinds of cool stuff in there, little extra tidbits for the fans, uh, pre-shows, post-shows, exclusive interviews, um, videos from our distant, distant past, way pre-podcast. Um, and you can get it all for just a buck. Yeah. Just a buck. You could be like uh, Jeffrey Zilks, who has yes. brought us much, much success on Patreon. And uh, you might also know him as One Each Dark Redeemer. Uh, yeah, Jeff is an awesome dude and, uh, we really appreciate the buck that he gave. Uh, you might even say that he gives a fuck. Yeah. Oh, he does. And I can prove that, uh, Diamond Club version three, he was one of the lead, lead producers on, um, the first two or the, the, not this latest one because he was out of pocket, but the two previous that stream, uh, streamathons, he had a major role in. Oh, absolutely. Um, just Overall, an amazing dude. And I, I, got, I went to his house when I went to, to Dallas last year. I stopped by his place, and we went out to lunch and stuff. I got to tell you, this dude is geek of all geeks. He has, like, every magic card ever made. Um, he's got collections of DVDs. And I don't mean he's got, like, a ton of DVDs. No, he's got, like, oh, here's all the DS9s, including, ah. like, the Japanese releases and shit. Like, he's one of those right. guys. Like, it's insane. Gotcha. He is, he's, God, he's, he's far more geeky than I am. And to be the, all that and be a top-notch individual as well, he kicks ass. So thank you very much to Jeff. We appreciate your support, and uh, we appreciate all that you do for Diamond Club in general. Yeah, so be like Jeff. Go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. Yeah. Um, and right now I should be playing the music for the thing, but my stream, my stream thing is not working. <laughs> Uh, did did you did you close the app? Um, I think maybe I didn't open. Oh, I know why now. Look at that. I was on the wrong fucking profile. Oh, well, let's there try, you go. Let's try that now. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. So my game this week is called. National Public Radiotopia. So, all right. Uh, I, I'm going to give you a list of podcasts, and you're going to tell me 
if it is a show from NPR, NPR or Radiotopia. Radiotopia. Oh, 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 this could be rough. Yeah, it seems like it would be easy. Mm-mm. I just had this idea because we're going to talk about some some like podcast stuff on a podcast here in a little bit. I figured let me let me see if this would make a good game. And oh my, it is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Uh, so let's let's see how you fare. Okay, uh, your first podcast is Planet Money. Planet Money is going to be an NPR podcast. Yes, yes, it is your. Second podcast is Space Bridge. Space Bridge is going to be a Radiotopia podcast. Holy crap. Okay, okay. All right, so you're, you're faring pretty well so far. All right. <laughs> That's all luck. <laughs> all right, your, your third one is Hidden Brain. Hidden Brain. I'm going to say that's a Radiotopia as well. Got him. <laughs> that's an NPR show. Mm-hmm. White Lies. White Lies? That sounds Radiotopia. That actually sounds... That, that actually sounds like... Um, uh, uh, oh, it's not Slack. It's whatever the other one is. Go ahead. Yeah, what, what makes this so difficult is that NPR and Radiotopia both have some of the highest quality podcasts that there are in existence. Mm-hmm. Uh incredible topics, incredible hosts, unpeckable production value. It's, um, it's impeccable. What did I say? Unpeckable. Oh, well, you can't peck it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you try pecking it. It's, it's, it's uh, unpeckable, just like your grammar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, they're, they're both really, really good podcasting, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, collectives, companies, yeah, networks. Um, I think any of the above would apply, but they're all they're all great. All right, your next one is the Illusionist. Oh, that is clearly Radiotopia because I listened to that podcast. <laughs> rough ten. Uh, speaking of which, rough translation. NPR. Yes, it is NPR. That was a guess. <laughs> Criminal. Criminal is NPR. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Out of all of the ones on this list, oh. I thought this one was going to be a gimme because I hear, because I, I listen to several Radiotopia shows and yeah. the, they, they're constantly advertising Criminal. I use their, Overwatch, like, so I skip past the ads. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is always like the the uh, almost a post show ad read that uh, Roman Mars does at the right. end of ninety nine pi. Like, and he, I have a, he's I have been a button on my steering wheel that skips ahead thirty seconds, so I just do 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 do, and then it stops when the next one starts. So, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, the next one, Radio Diaries. Radio Diaries. That's ooh, that could be another one too. I'm gonna go with NPR. Nope, that one's Radiotopia. Your next one is The Truth. The Truth, uh, Radiotopia. And for your final one, Ask Me Another. NPR. You get a passing score, sir. This seems to be a trend, uh, getting six out of ten correct. <laughs> you seem to do that a lot. Uh, whatever works, man. Yeah, so speaking speaking of podcasts that we enjoy, mm-hmm. there is a podcast that's not part of NPR or Radiotopia. Uh, it's more of an independent flavor mm-hmm. called The Unmade Podcast. This is a show that I told you you had to listen to. And you yeah. said no. <laughs> Initially, yes. Because it because it, it has Brady Heron, who but I like. Brady. Yeah, from Number File, he's the producer and creator of Number File and um, uh, tons of other educational programs. But he's on Hello Internet with CGP Gray, whom you can't stand listening to. Right. So when right. I said you've got to listen to this, it's got Brady Heron, and you were like, no, and I was like, no, really. Well, I think you started with. It's got one of the guys from Hello Internet. 
that would explain my no. <laughs> I'm not watching it. And w Scottis one wants to emphasize that I got the D. <laughs> right. Yes. Sixty percent is a D, and you got the D. Um, but yeah. So eventually, you listen to it, and we both just kind of enjoy this podcast. It's really, really good. The concept behind it is bring an idea for a show that is not being made or could not be made. Explain what the draw is, what the kind of why you think it should be made, and then riff on it for a little while, see where the idea takes you, and then go to a new idea. Right. So the the concept of the show is as you described, but that that alone is is somewhat compelling, right? If you've got a couple of, of decent hosts uh, presenting that material, but Brady and Tim, I, I could listen to them just read phone books to each other. Uh, <laughs> they are, yeah. It, it anyway, has so, to be to each other though. And, and it could just right, be yes. Brady reading and Tim, Tim laughing. He's right, got, so, a, he's got a Bob and Tom laugh. Like I could just hear a laugh track of Tim laughing and be yeah, so just like, a, a, a quick plug for those guys. Just go over to unmade.fm and uh, check them out. Uh, yep. They're fantastic. So what we decided to do this week is, is bring a couple of ideas for podcasts that we would like to make. And, um, or that we just would like to be made. Right. Somebody should make them, yes. if not us. Because, uh, uh, let's face it, uh, we're probably not going to make these podcasts. Uh, it, then it would be the not made yet. This is the unmade. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So who, who, who wants to start? Do you want to start? I think I'll you've start. Got a, I think you have more in here than I do. So why don't yeah. you go ahead and start? I'll start. Okay. So my first idea um, is called Deeds Dad Did. And ah. the concept of this show is that uh, everybody knows somebody who has accomplished things or, or, or feels that they are a little higher on the pecking order of masculinity. But, uh, yeah. but we don't need to worry about that. I want to hear the stories of people who cherish the masculinity and the accomplishments of their fathers. So this oh. isn't even things that they did. This is stuff that they are claiming their dad did. Ah, I see. Claiming that their dad did. Yes, so that's this could a key. Be, oh, okay. So it they the stories may or may not be true. Right. Okay. Right. So w would the conceit of the show be that uh, somebody would come in and tell us a story, like a tall tale, and then um, the, the other host has to figure out if it's if it's a true story or not, or tear apart the story, or or what would the format? Be. I, so, so in my in my mind, I imagined it as a three party show. Okay, uh, you have two uh, contestants, if you will. I guess you'd call them contestants. Okay, and they come in and they want to tell a story about their dad, and they're allowed to tell any story they want. The uh, the, the verifiable truth is held by the third party, and then okay. they have to guess which parts of the story are true. And which ones are uh, not? I see. So they could probably ask questions about the story and see yes. what what details can be added and things like that. That's yes. that's pretty fascinating. And and it's competitive. So one of them is going to walk away the winner with one of the deeds their dad did. Uh, and 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 it's it's literally whoever can tell the tallest tale without getting caught by the other person on the things that they exaggerated. Gotcha. I'd listen to that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I think uh, I, I think it could be well. It depends on really on the guest, right? Because if you get just shitty guests that can't tell a story, well, of course. But think of all the different walks of life. Like you could have a farmer out there and in a, in a in a city boy that don't know anything about each other, and they could just be blowing smoke right up each other's ass and and wouldn't even know it. Which and, happens at school and at work and bars all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah, and then, of and, course, uh, there's got to be something that they're exaggerating, but you could always make it to where the exaggeration is the thing that... And it can't be just like, oh, his color, his shirt was blue instead of his shirt was red, but something that's exaggerated intentionally that could fit right in with the story underlying under, uh, underneath something else that just sounds completely far-fetched but it's actually true. I mean, right, or you could right. just go completely far-fetched, and the real part of it was that he was in his 57 Chevy that he rebuilt himself in his garage. Like, yeah, I was thinking like you know my dad was a fighter pilot and he had an encounter with UFO, where right. the the most fantastical part of that sounds like the UFO part, but it could be that my dad was actually a Cessna pilot, 
yep. and did encounter an, an, an identified object. Right. So it had, it had to be a, a stretching of the truth somewhere. Now, the, the big part of that is then you start adding, asking questions and the other person has to be able to keep their story straight, add details right. and everything else. And, you know, if you don't know the details of the truth, it can start seeming like that is the part that... So I think it could be really interesting, especially with with uh, uh, like a comedians. Oh my gosh, some improv comedians or something like that. Oh yeah, that's hundred percent. Yeah, I'm 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 in. I want somebody to make this. <laughs> somebody that's not me and you. Yeah, I don't think we could carry that well, off. Oh, I mean, I don't know my dad. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so tell tell me more about how you don't know your dad. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so so the first show idea that I had for this week. So you many years ago now bought me the boxed set of the Dungeons and Dragons animated series. The full season. Yeah, the the uh the you know, the full collection. So it went 3 seasons, 27 episodes and um Oh yeah, yeah so I, I, that's what I meant, the full series. Yes. Right. So it's it's been on my shelf for a long time it's been one of my treasured possessions and it's, it's been an elf on the shelf yeah so i decided just a few days ago that i'm going to bust this thing out and watch a few episodes with my son lucas oh my did this take me back it was such a fun thing to watch it's exactly how i remember it i was gonna like, ask does it hold up Oh, yes. And it's even better now because for two reasons. Uh, one, when I saw this show as a, as a small child, I had not yet played Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. So this is my first viewing post playing Dungeons and Dragons. So there's that. So you get all the inside jokes now. Right. And the, the second great thing about it is that my son is in a, a somewhat accomplished dungeon master <laughs> and his commentary <laughs> was amazing because he was talking so much shit about the character dungeon master <laughs> and how he like, Oh my God, why? Oh Jesus. Why would you put these first level characters against Tiamat, the dragon, which is like a level 23 multi-headed uh, dragon. Uh, Yes, it's like, oh my God. So, gave me an idea. Watch through the episodes of this of this series with one one host being me in this in this case, setting up the episodes as uh, like character encounters. and so you're uh, saying make this a an adventure. Make the show an adventure. Well, basically, but describe it. Describe it as an adventure, like a D and D actual campaign adventure. So I, I describe the NPCs, so yeah. like the additional characters that show up as NPCs. Uh, describe the you know the fights and things as encounters, and then have Lucas be the critical DM, uh, explaining what's going on and whether or not the dungeon master that that played this uh scenario with their first level characters whether or not he, he was a good dm mm. or uh where he would improve or what what the dm should have done better uh you know th things like that I, I think it would be a fascinating way to watch this this series yeah yeah that that that, that would be fun yeah i don't i i think it might be more fun if you I really think that the the idea of taking this show and turning it into an adventure, and then having people run through it, and that being the podcast running mm -hmm. through this adventure, especially with an accomplished uh -huh. DM, the DM that can try to keep them focused along the storyline, I think that could really be the gold in this idea. Yeah, I could see it actually being a parallel show. Yeah, having. Um having an audio version, which is what I described and then having a follow on video, like a YouTube series, like where, I mean, you've, you've probably seen YouTube channels, right? Where they, they, they play Dungeons and Dragons around a table and you've got the, uh, you know, like the tabletop camera and the side cameras and whatnot. And, yep. and, and through the adventure, right, it's have that be like, role. well, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> that being of course the most, um, uh, popular and successful <laughs> version of the concept. 
um, yeah, I think, man, this this would be fun. This is one that I would want to do myself. I'm not so sure if I would actually watch someone else do it, mm. but I want very much to do this. I don't know if it's going to come to fruition. But. I see. I see. Yeah. Um, what What's your next idea? Okay, my next idea. And this is going to get a little meta. Okay. Bad gear reviews. Bad gear reviews. So like, are we talking like tech gear? Just gear. Gear. Any gear. Okay. Okay. Here's the idea. People review things all the time. The good ones make it to air. Okay. What happens to the bad ones? Like the bad review, like the the reviews that themselves. The bad reviews not- and the bad gear. Okay. So the concept would be, if I get a piece of gear to review, I start okay. filming. As I'm filming, I review this gear as I'm trying to use it. the The point of it is as any good reviewer will do, if you can use the uh, the gear to record or, or annotate or whatever the, uh, the the review that you're doing, that's the optimal thing. If I get a mic and I record the, inter- the review in a different mic, that doesn't do anything. But if I get a mic and record the review in the mic that I'm reviewing, then it gives people more of a sense of what's going on. Right, okay. Well, what happens when it's just complete shit and it takes you an hour and a half to get the mic to work? <laughs> And then once the mic is working, it's trash. It's trash. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And you condense that down to like the best 10 minutes and you release that. You get a car and you want to review the car. You can just go to a dealership and review the car. Record yourself doing it. While you're doing it, make a phone call on, on the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is holy shit. It's really crappy. <laughs> That's now part of the review. Oh, man. Okay. That's so I, instead of instead of watching all these great reviews that are really professionally done, it's kind of a, a an almost well what happens when the review doesn't go as planned? Either the gear is crap or the review like you go to install it and it takes like six hours to install the driver because you can't find it. I want to see that kind of stuff. So you can plan on reviewing a normal review. This could be a community project even. You plan on reviewing something as a normal review. You record yourself prepping for the review while you're doing it. If it turns out good, you release it. If it turns out shit, it becomes part of this. Ah, uh, <laughs> I see. Okay, so if you do end up with gold, what what you you don't put it anywhere? Or is this like the outtakes to be released like the patrons or something? This would be the outtakes, but if it's a successful review, if I get the mic, unbox it, plug it in, and it works perfectly, and then nothing goes wrong, then just fucking, that's your review. That doesn't, who gives a shit? <laughs> I see. But if you plug it in, and all of a sudden you got inst- you got malware in your computer, then I want to know. Or you got to install a driver, but the driver doesn't work well with the new version of Windows. Oh, you know? Right, 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 right. Like, or you go to, you go to the, the, uh, the website that has the driver and that website is down or the website's in Korean. So you got to translate that shit and hope you're in the right version. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So this Excellent. is the reviews okay. that don't make, it, don't make it otherwise, but you'd have to record it while you're doing the original review because you can't go back and, and, and recreate your surprise that the website came up in Korean and is giving you 15 ad blocker warnings when you don't have an ad blocker installed, you know, mm-hmm. like, so it almost be like a B roll for reviews, but only gotcha. the ones that went wrong. I got gotcha. you. All right, my my next idea is actually an idea that I've had for a long, long time. Um, I don't know. I would love to make this show, but I don't know that I will ever have the opportunity, uh, just because of the the amount of time this would take to actually produce. Um, so sp- we were talking about NPR and Radiotopia uh, before, and and uh, this idea actually was inspired by some of the shows that I've I've listened to, particularly from Radiotopia. Uh, so th- this idea I call underrepresented, and uh, basically, it would be um, about underrepresented uh, communities. So uh, whether it's a uh, 
you know, a racial minority, and I'm talking specifically like in the United States, right? So um, either a racial minority or, an, you know, immigrants or uh, homosexual or transgender or, or some um, category or community of, of people that basically people that are not, you know, fit the, um, you know, white male heterosexual, you know, uh, Christian, you know, whatever. Right. And each episode would focus on a particular uh, community of people and have uh, maybe three or four representatives of said community as guests on the show. Mm -hmm. Not like in a roundtable thing, but these would be like individual interviews, which the, the episode would feature like snippets from the conversations. Um, and there would be some like hard hitting type questions, right? So first there'd be like... Uh, uh, you know, explain to me the challenges of the community. Like, why is there um, discrimination against your community? Uh, things like that. And then we would talk about, like, myths associated with that culture, um, you know, things that they encounter, and maybe, like, um, some response to, uh, uh, you know, may, maybe slur, like, a, you know, racial slurs or, or uh, homophobic slurs or what, what have you. Mm -hmm. And this would definitely be a mature audience only show because it would definitely have coarse language. Um, it's a good thing you can restrict the audience to podcasts. Well, I mean, this would, it would come with the explicit tag. I mean, it's up to you to uh, filter yourself, right? Uh, filter your feed. Um, but the, I don't know. It's something that, first of all, I don't know if I have the skill set. Well, I definitely don't have the skill set at this time. But the skill set and the, I guess, the maturity that I would have to bring to the, the, you know, the, the approach of the subject matter. Now, um, one thing I see here is it could either be an anchor or a sale that you are a heterosexual, middle-aged, middle-class white male. Right. And so, that would be part of it is the, because I am genuinely curious about these communities mm -hmm. because I'm not a, a part of, like I'm, because people always say, well, <sighs> People of underrepresented communities will always talk about white privilege, right? Yeah. And I get it somewhat because of, you know, I listen to what people say, right? But as a white male, et cetera, right? Like, it's hard to see the privilege, right? And there's, all, right. in fact, a lot of my peers that think that white privilege is a myth. Well, you can't or that see, male privilege is a myth. You can't see the forest for the trees. You you're so deep in it that you don't know right. that everything that you see that, around you is actually what everyone else is calling. Right. The the only people that say that white privilege is a myth are white, are white people. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so th th that's kind of where the you know the origin of the idea of it was like bring these stories to, um, you know, hopefully, a, you know, a mass appeal type audience. If I can, if I could get production values anywhere near the neighborhood of like a Radiotopia show. Um, and then, you know, of course, you know, seeking out guests. I mean, I, I would look for a, a variety of, of guests, but if I could get like on each episode, like one person with some ra name recognition yeah. to contribute, um, you know, that gets the, that gets the Twitter game going, that gets the, you know, the buzz out there and things like that. And I think it could be, I don't know, it would be, I, th I think it would be a very enriching experience for me to go through. I just don't, I don't know that I will ever have the time, skill set, et cetera, <laughs> to actually devote to make this thing good. And this is definitely something that I would not put out if it wasn't like basically perfect. It would have to be very high quality or it's it's going to be trash. Um, and this is actually, this parallels something that I've been wanting to do for a long time about veterans. The problem mm. that stops me, the thing that stops me from doing it is that same, like, am I the right person? Do I have the right skills? Will I ask the right questions? Am I actually going to get to the bottom of what I want to know and what I feel needs to be shared appropriately? And what audience would I be going for? And that, yeah, so I, I kind of, it's, mine would be more centralized on veterans, which would be one of the minorities that you, that you speak to speak of. Sure. But sure. yeah, I, this, this really closely parallels that, that idea. 
um, sharing those stories and understanding the, the concepts and the, the trials and tribulations and, and where they're finding success, where they don't. Yeah, I, I just culture in general, as I get older, culture in general, sociology in general, just really, um, uh, it's really on my mind more and more every day. Sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. My last idea is called the week in news and news is intentionally spelled G N U S. Okay. Because the concept, and this is actually one that I spun around with a couple of friends of mine. We were looking at doing it and then one of them moved to Korea and the whole thing fell apart. I want to get a set of comedians together. Comedians, okay. improvers, that kind of stuff. And now, would they would they be humans or would they be news? Well, humans. Okay, but because a new isn't a new like a like a deer looking. I I have no like, idea. I only know that on on uh, on Sesame Street they said no news is good news. <laughs> that sounds very discriminatory to me. Against news. <laughs> Yes, you gotta watch out like, for that local news union. Union like like deer and antelope and 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 moose can, you know they're they're welcome, but not news. Well, I'll tell you Get what, out of here, news. Well, maybe news took out too many cars. Um, <laughs> okay. So the idea would be that each week I gather or someone gathers three improv trained comedians, and you bring in a story, a news story from each person from wherever around the country that they want to be from or wherever they want to find it. And okay. the presenter of the story presents the story in a, in as much fact as possible and the other people act out the scene. So it's an improv podcast based on the day's news. Okay. Or and the this, week's is a, news. this is an audio podcast, right? Yes, so, def definitely an audio podcast. So right, I'm talking okay, character right. actors and, and people that can really take the voice and want to like lean into the biases and really get the, the blue humor going and, and kind of, okay. kind of take a news story, a normal news story, maybe something about Congress, maybe something local about, you know, Jimmy got fired again, but now he's whatever. I don't care. Um, you bring in a story that you think has a, a strong comedic based base and then let the other people act it out. And I think that would be hilarious, given the right people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Given the right people. This is, this is one I don't know that I would want it to be a live show, uh, but a produced show, because this yes. is something that could very easily go off the rails, especially if you don't have the right people. Yeah, it, it would have to be pr uh, produced prior to release. Yeah, and, and even if you do have the right people, if you don't catch them on the right day, <laughs> it might not turn out well. Uh, but done right, yeah, this would be highly entertaining. This is very much a uh, like a whose line, yeah, uh, whose line is it anyway? With, uh, with, type a, of with a central anchor, and what you could even do is have have the audience provide stories, and then they can go in there and kind of choose, pick and choose which ones they want to go with. Oh, sure. And uh, yeah, I, I just think it'd be I, I would I would listen to this. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. This is definitely a like a a, a commute, going home from work type of uh, a thing. I would love to listen to. Forget about what happened at work and just lose yourself in the comedy of of uh, these jackasses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That sounds great. So that that's what I would go with. Um, a hey, uh, ritual misery is found on YouTube. YouTube dot com slash ritual misery because of you. Thank you very much. Uh, very awesome, and we appreciate it greatly. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find all of our videos there. Uh, you can find whatever I'm doing over on Twitter at rm underscore del noche. Pretty much everywhere else on the internet, I'm del noche or del noche seventy seven. Amos, what about you? Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E on Twitter. I don't know why I say it like that, but I've been doing it for years. So The show is at Ritual Misery on Twitter. It is. R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-R-Y. You're stealing Flavor Toothpaste line again. Uh, you can also I join our Discord. I didn't sing it. <laughs> Over Discord. Uh, actually, just go to bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Join our conversations. That, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.com. 
or switch to twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And we'd like to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music when we use it because we didn't use it to start the show, but whatever. And uh, oh, thank you. Right now. Thank you for listening for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. You have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. That's a shoot!